welcome back. My name's Matt and in this second CAD on training video on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro, we're going to look at some of the basic steps you need to go through when you start editing a video. Editing is a bit like building a house. You need to lay the foundations first, which is your story structure. Then you build the video up by adding extra shots and other elements. But before you start building, you need to get to know your materials. That means watching all of your clips and working out what you want to use in your edit. This can take a long time, but the better you know your footage, the easier it will be to edit. A good way of doing this is to drag all the footage to a sequence, just like we've done here. Then you just press play and watch what you've got. Sometimes, for speed, I scrub through the clips with the playhead rather than playing them. If I like a clip and I think I'm going to use it in my edit, I mark it by pulling it up to track 2, like I've done with this clip here. Another job that's important to do at this early stage is syncing your sound. You may have recorded your audio separately from your video if you filmed interviews or something like that. You need to match the clips up now before you start cutting up the interviews. It's a painstaking job, so if you've got a lot of clips that need syncing, I'd recommend selecting the ones you want to use first instead of syncing up the whole lot. You should have a clear idea of what you want to use once you've watched all your footage. Before I show you how to sync sound, we need to do some housekeeping. I don't want to embark on this stage of work on this first sequence. I want to leave this sequence as it is so I can refer back to all my footage in case I need to reselect something. So what I'm going to do now is return to the project window and duplicate this sequence. You can do that by clicking on the sequence, going up to the edit menu and selecting duplicate. Alternatively, you could right click on the sequence and click on duplicate. There, as you can see, I now have a copy of my first sequence. Now I need to rename my sequences so I don't get confused later on. So if I click on the name of sequence 1, I'm going to call this one All Footage. And let's rename the copy of that sequence to Selects. OK, let's double click on the Select sequence now to open it in the timeline. As you can see, I now have two sequences open on the timeline, and you can switch between them using the tabs. You can leave All Footage open if you want, or close it by clicking on the little cross like I've just done. This process of duplicating sequences is something I'd recommend you do regularly as you edit, to save your work in stages. It's good practice and helps keep you organised. Another thing that's good practice is to make a habit of saving your project regularly. Let's do that now before we start working on the select sequence. You can go up to File and just click on Save, or the shortcut is Control S or Command S if you're on a Mac. Returning to our new sequence, what you need to do now is find your selected interviews and put them together in one place on the timeline. You should also delete the interview clips you don't want. Deleting from the timeline is very easy. Just select a clip and press Delete on your keyboard. Don't worry, deleting is non-destructive. It doesn't delete the clip from the project or from your hard drive, and you can bring the clip back at any time. You can also undo an action, just like you can in word processing software. Go up to Edit and select Undo, or the shortcut is Ctrl Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac. I'm going to leave this clip deleted though. Just like with your interview clips, with all your other clips, you should delete the ones you don't want and organise them according to scene. So what you end up with on this select sequence is the core clips you're going to edit with. To make things simple for these training videos, I don't have that many clips, so I don't need to do much work. I do want to separate my interview clip though. I've only got one, it's this long one here. So let's drag it away from the rest of the footage by clicking on it, holding down the mouse and moving it. The other way I could do this is the same way you'd move a chunk of text in any word processing software, by copying or cutting and pasting. So let's undo the move we've just done by pressing Ctrl Z. Now select the clip again and go up to the edit menu. And there we have cut. Select that and then move your playhead to the point you want to put the clip on the timeline. Go back to edit and select paste. And you'll see the clip has copied to the point you marked with the playhead. The keyboard shortcuts for these actions make them much faster. So to copy it's the standard Ctrl C or Command C on the Mac. And to cut it's Ctrl X or Command X and to paste it's Ctrl V or Command V. If you try them you'll find the keys are conveniently close to each other. Keyboard shortcuts really help to speed things along once you've got used to them. Now as you can see there's a big gap between my clips. I want to get rid of the gap and have all my non-interview clips together. I could box select these clips at the end and drag them over or I could just select the gap and delete it just as I would delete a clip so let's try that out. Deleting the gap is called ripple delete as it shunts the footage along.
There, now I've finished organising my clips, I can bring my audio clip into my sequence to sync my sound. And there it is. What you want to do is drop it onto the Audio 2 track just under the interview clip. Be careful not to override the interview clip's own audio, which is what would happen if you put it on the wrong track. Like this. You need the audio that was recorded with the video to do the syncing. So let's undo that and try it again. Ctrl Z to undo, remember. And drag the audio clip to the correct track. There we go, now we've got two tracks of audio. As you can see, the audio clip is much longer than the video clip. This is quite normal and just shows how troublesome syncing can be. If you had a slate at the beginning of the clip, things would be easier. But in this case, we don't. So the first thing we need to do is get an idea of the contents of both audio tracks. Then we can line them up roughly according to that. Let's just turn audio 2 off and listen to the start of the video clip to hear what's said. So, so the Cadon learning portal is provided. Now let's turn audio 1 off so we can find the same content on the audio clip. <laughs> so, no, that's not it. The same content is quite a bit of the way in, about here. So the cat on. Yes, that's it. So let's pull this audio clip along so that this content matches the video clip's content. Hold down the mouse and drag. Now they're roughly matched up. Look at the waveforms. You can see they're pretty much the same shape. Now we need to match them up exactly. OK, now they're roughly lined up, but they need to be exactly aligned, so let's zoom in to make more detailed adjustments. Once you think the two clips are lined up exactly, make sure both Audio 1 and Audio 2 are turned on, then play the two tracks together. So, so the on on OK, so did you hear there was a slight echo? That's because the two tracks aren't quite aligned yet. Our aim is for no echo. To achieve that, what we need to do is move our audio track by one frame. So let's zoom in to make this detailed adjustment. As I drag the clip, you can see this little pop-up here tells you how many frames you're moving it by. And play back again. So the Cadon learning portal is... And there you go, the echo is gone. So now we've got it perfectly aligned. The next thing I want to do is trim down my audio clip so that it's the same length as the video clip. If you hover the cursor over the end of a clip, you'll see it changes into this red arrow. If you click and hold with your mouse, you'll find that you can move the end of the clip. As I'm doing this at the beginning of my clip, I'm adjusting the in point. So let's drag it right to the point where the video clip starts. Be careful to make sure you're not moving the clip itself. The changes you're making is to the start of the clip. There, as you can see, the clip hasn't changed position. It's just had its beginning cut off. Another way of doing this is by using the razor tool, which you can find in the tools panel. Here it is, click on the icon, and as you return your cursor to the timeline, you'll notice that it's no longer an arrow, it becomes the razor tool. The razor only works on clips on the timeline. So now what I want to do is cut the end off my audio clip. To do that, just click on the point you want to make a cut. You need to be quite careful where you click, but Premiere will help you get the position right to a certain extent. If in doubt, you should always zoom in. Now I've cut my audio clip. I've got this bit at the end that I want to get rid of. To delete this segment, you need to select it, which means you need to get rid of the razor tool and go back to the select tool. So let's return to the tools panel. And the select tool is the top tool, the arrow. So if you click on that. Now when I return to the timeline, the cursor remains as an arrow and I can click on the segment I want to delete. So I can select it and then I can press delete on my keyboard. If you find yourself using the razor tool a lot, it may be helpful to learn the keyboard shortcuts. So the razor tool is C, and the select tool is V. So they're very useful shortcuts to learn, because you often have to toggle between C and V. So now the audio clip exactly matches the video clip. It's in the right position and it's the same length. What we need to do next is get rid of the original audio that comes with the video clip, because our aim is to use only the externally recorded audio, which is much better quality. So to do that, we need to unlink the video from its audio. You can do this by right-clicking on the clip and you'll see Unlink. And if you select that, that's it. Now the two parts are no longer connected and I can move the audio part around without affecting the video. The next step is to just delete the audio. So press Delete on your keyboard. Now what we want to do is link this higher quality audio to the video clip. If you hold down the Shift key to select both the audio and the video, and then right-click again 
and select a link this time. There, now you have synced your audio. The original sound that came with the video has been replaced by the higher quality sound that was recorded on an external device. Once you've organised and selected your clips and synced your sound, you're ready to start cutting things down and working on a structure for your video. I recommend duplicating your sequence again at this stage. So let's go back to the project window and do that. Right click on the select sequence and duplicate. I'm going to call this third sequence rough cut. Double click on it to open it up in the timeline. We just went over the two main ways to edit clips in the timeline. Either by trimming the ends of a clip or by cutting using the razor tool. What you need to do now is use either of these two methods to cut your clips down so that you're left only with the parts you want in your video. I recommend starting with your verbal elements like your interviews or your voiceover as these will form the bones of your structure. Just to illustrate the process, I'm going to cut this interview clip up into a usable segment. Firstly I'm going to play the clip until I find a good start point. So right here just before he says so, so the cat Let's trim the start of the clip to that point. So the cat on learning Next I want to cut out a bit in the middle and make this sound bite shorter. I already know this clip very well, so I can cut it here and here and delete the middle section. And it's going to play as if it were one sentence. So if you just listen types of kit that they can use to produce all that sounds quite smooth. A wide variety of different types of kit that they can use to produce all sorts of different types. By the way, if you're going to do this in real life, this process of cutting down would take much longer than this. And now let's play it again. This time watch the video. A wide variety of different types of kit that they can use to You'll notice it jumps at the edit point, and that's called a jump cut, and you want to avoid having this kind of thing in your edit because it looks bad. So we're going to select another clip to cover it up. As he's talking about kit, let's use the clip of the camera. Let's trim it down a bit and put it on track 2 to cover the jump cut. Now if you play it back, it looks natural. Types of kit that they can use to produce all sorts of different types of content. There we have a little edit that works smoothly. And this is the basic process you'll be following as you build your video. You cut down your verbal elements, then you add other clips to either cover cuts or add interest and meaning. This isn't going to be a complete edit, but before we move on to the next stage of editing, there's another clip I want to add to our sequence. I think we need something introductory at the beginning here, just for fun. Let's use the time lapse, which is the clip here. This will allow me to introduce you to a few of the ways you can make changes to your visuals, as well as the effect controls window. But first, let me just get rid of these two clips, because I don't want to use them in my edit. I will need the seaside clip later on though, so I'm going to leave that where it is. Now, let's move the time lapse to the beginning of our sequence and on to track two. You may remember that this time lapse clip is a different size from the other clips. Viewing it in the program monitor as we are now, it doesn't look any different, but actually we're only seeing a part of the picture. To see a clip's dimensions, you need to double click on the program monitor, and now we've got a circle showing up in the centre of the clip. If we could see the edges, they'd been marked by white lines, but the clip is too big, so we can't see them. Let's go to another clip and double click on the program monitor again, and there you can see the white lines on this clip. That's because it's the same size as the frame. Both are at 1920 by 1080 or Full HD. So let's return to the time lapse now. To see the whole image, we need to get the image to fit the frame. So right click on the clip and select Scale to Frame Size. There now we can see the whole image, but there are now these ugly black bars on either side. They're called pillar boxes. We want to avoid showing black around the edges of our frame, and we also want to cut out all these buildings that appear in the shot. So let's change the image manually. Double click on the program monitor again. Now pull the white line to resize the image. OK, so that's about the right size. But let's reposition it slightly too. If you click and hold on the picture with the mouse and then drag it around until it looks right. So that looks about right now. Doing all this by eye is usually fine, but sometimes you'll want a bit more control. That's when you'll need the effect controls window. And here it is behind the source monitor. 
This is where you can make adjustments to any effect you have added to your clip. We haven't added any extra effects yet, but there are already some things there that are inherent within the clip, and that includes its size and position. You have to have a clip selected on the timeline for anything to show here, so we've already got the time-lapse clip selected. Position and size both come under motion. First I want to show you how to turn off the effect. You can do that by clicking this little effects button here. A message window comes up to tell you that when you hover over it. When I click on it, you can see the image returns to its original size and position. And click on the icon again and the changes we've made are applied again. Now let's open motion up using this little arrow. As you can see, there's quite a few things in here. Let's look at the position and scale first. These numbers in yellow are the parameters. At the moment they're all a bit random because we've made changes to the image. I want to show you what these numbers would look like if we hadn't made any changes. So let's undo our changes. You can do that by pressing this reset button. Now the position has returned to 960 by 540 and the scale has returned to 100. The scale is a percentage so that's 100%. The numbers here show that the image is centrally positioned because 960 and 540 are half of 1920 and 1080, which you may remember is the frame size we selected because that's full HD. So let's make our changes again using the numbers this time. If you hover over them with your mouse, you'll see the cursor changes to a hand and these little arrows appear. If you click and drag left or right with your mouse, you can change the amounts. There, you can now see the changes I'm making to the image. And you can also type in a number manually. If you click on the number, it will become editable, so now you can type in the amount you want. So let's redo the adjustments we had before on this clip. There you go, that's good. Now there's one more thing I want to show you in motion, and that's uh, rotation. I think this scene is a little bit wonky, so I think it needs to be straightened up a bit. You do that in rotation. So let's play with the numbers a bit so you can see the result. Now if this was a smaller picture, any changes you make here may well reveal some black around the edges of your image, so you'll have to make it bigger to compensate. Making adjustments like this with the arrows isn't working very well, because the change I want to make is really small. So let's try typing a number in manually. Let's try 0 0.5. There you go, that's working better now. Now we've adjusted the size and position of this clip, let's try playing it on the timeline. Click on the timeline window and use the up and down arrow on your keyboard to get to the beginning of the clip. I need to select this track so that I can navigate it. Now press spacebar to start playing. That looks good now, but it lasts too long, so I want to make it faster. To adjust the speed of a clip, go to Clip on the menu bar at the top here and select Speed and Duration. You can get to the same thing by right clicking on a clip or with the keyboard shortcut Ctrl R, which is Command R on the Mac. That opens up this little window. To make the clip faster, all I need to do is type in a percentage here. Twice as fast is going to be 200%, so let's try 200, and if you press OK to confirm the change, and then play the clip. That's more like the speed I want. As you can see, the length of the clip has changed as well. Speed and duration are obviously linked. But you can break that link if you want. Let's open up the window again. If you press on this chain icon here, that breaks the link. This would be useful in some scenarios, for instance when you've already got a clip edited into a sequence and changing the length of it would mess with the neighbouring clips. So if I want to keep this current length, but make it go a bit slower, all I need to do is break the link and change the speed. The other thing you can do in this window is make the clip run backwards. Just click on reverse speed. I don't want it to run backwards, so I'm going to deselect this, and I'm going to keep the speed and duration linked. So that leaves my clip running at 200%. Let's press OK and return to the timeline. Let's just reposition the clip so that it starts the sequence off. Now, to make this transition between time-lapse and interview a bit smoother, I'm going to teach you a little editing trick. If you position the clip so that it covers the beginning few seconds of the interview, what you'll get is the voice of the interviewee coming in before we see him. 
This is called staggering and it prepares your audience for the jump. Let's play it back to see if it works. So the CADARN learning portal has provided its... And yes, that works well. So now we've covered how to establish a structure and build up our video with different audio and video elements. Once this is done, you're ready to move on to the final stages of editing, which is what we're going to look at in our next Premiere Pro training video.